Every day the mycology unit receives many specimens for the diagnosis of fungal infections from skin and nails. The ability of the laboratory to detect a fungus is very much dependent on the quality of the specimen it receives. It is necessary to collect an adequate amount of material for both microscopy and culture. Quantity is the most important thing. This short video will demonstrate the proper collection techniques necessary to generate a good laboratory specimen for the diagnosis of cutaneous fungal infections and onychomycosis. Dermatophytosis is the medical term used to describe fungal infections of the skin, hair and nails. These infections are commonly known as tinea, ringworm or onychomycosis. They are caused by a closely related group of mould-like fungi known as dermatophytes. We recommend the following collection instruments for taking mycology samples. All instruments must be cleaned and sterilised after each collection. A bone curette is ideal for taking skin scrapings from the scalp, skin, groin and perianal areas and the feet especially from the toe webs. Old type blunt scalpels are also good for skin and nail scrapings. The new disposable scalpel blades are very sharp and are not recommended. Never send used disposable scalpel blades with the specimen to the laboratory. A good pair of forceps are essential to pluck hairs and loose skin scales from scalp lesions. A pair of scissors or nail clippers will be needed to trim finger and toenails. Finally, we recommend that a swab be taken to pick up any loose skin scales. A moistened swab is a valuable collection tool, especially in tinea capitis, and also to pick up loose skin scales or keratin debris after a collection. Ideally, specimens should be scraped directly onto special black collection cards. These allow both the collector and the laboratory to clearly see the specimen. Cards may be then folded and sealed. Firstly, fold the bottom section upwards to cover the specimen. Then, fold the top section over to close the card. While holding the card firmly closed, start at the top by bending the adhesive flap back to peel off the backing strip. Then firmly stick down the adhesive flap to seal the card. Do the same with the two side flaps. Finally, make sure that the card is properly sealed and labelled for transport to the laboratory. Fungal scraping kits with black transport cards are available from consumer products. Nail specimens may also be collected into plastic universal containers or into plastic petri dishes. If a plastic petri dish has been used to collect the specimen, then it should be carefully sealed using parafilm. Sticky tape should never be used to seal petri dishes. The only reason for transferring a specimen from a plastic container to a black card would be for transport via the mail. This is often a difficult process due to the electrostatic charge associated with plastic containers. Use a swab to help sweep the specimen onto the card and to pick up any small bits. When finished, also send the swab to the laboratory. On the left, you see a typical scalp lesion showing hair loss and scaling. Note there are many small broken off infected hairs in the central part of the lesion. On the right, you see a typical large carry-on type lesion consisting of crusts, matted hair, exudate and scalp debris. You will need a bone curette to scrape the scaling areas. A pair of small tweezers will be needed to pluck out infected hairs. Take a swab of the lesion to pick up any loose scales to finish the collection. Swabs are very valuable tools when collecting from a carrion lesion. On the left you see a young boy showing numerous circular scaling lesions with distinct erythematous borders following contact with infectious kittens. On the right you see a five-week-old baby showing typical lesions with raised erythematous advancing borders following contact with several cats. In both these cases, we would use an old bone curette to scrape the advancing border of the lesion.
A moistened swab would then be used to collect any remaining loose skin scales. Here we see a bone curette being used to scrape a diffuse scaly skin lesion into a plastic Petri dish. However, a black collection card could also be used to collect the skin scales. A swab is then used to pick up the loose skin scales. Tinea of the groin showing circular erythematous scaly lesions with an advancing border. Once again we would use an old bone curette to scrape the advancing border of the lesion. A moistened swab would then be used to collect any remaining loose skin scales. A bone curette is used to scrape the advancing border of a groin lesion. Tinea cruris lesions are usually accessible on the inner thigh. Remember to also take a swab after scraping the lesion to pick up any loose skin scales. It is important to collect an adequate amount of material. Tinea pedis showing scaling macerated skin between the toes. You will need a bone curette to scrape the scaling areas. Sometimes a pair of small tweezers may also be useful to pull off bits of infected skin. Take a swab of the lesion to pick up any loose scales to finish the collection. Subclinical tinea pedis is often chronic and may remain localised just under the little toe for many years only to become apparent when spread to another site, usually the groin or nails. Most people, probably 20% of the adult population, carry tinea just under their little toe. When was the last time you looked under your little toe? You will need a bone curette to scrape the scaling areas and swab the lesion to pick up any loose scales to finish the collection. Vesicular type tinea pedis showing numerous blisters with a serous exudate. The blister roof is the most important specimen to collect. You will need a pair of small scissors and forceps to detach the blister roof. Also swab the lesion to finish the collection. Tinea pedis showing dry scaling lesions on the sole of the foot. You will need a bone curette or blunt scalpel to scrape the scaling areas. Once again, swab the lesion to pick up any loose scales to finish the collection. Severe tinea of the foot, sometimes called moccasin tinea pedis, showing extensive scaling. You will need a bone curette or blunt scalpel to scrape the scaling areas. Once again, swab the lesion to pick up any loose scales to finish the collection. Onychomycosis of the great toenail, caused by trichophyton rubrum. You will need a blunt scalpel to scrape under the nail. Once again, swab the lesion to pick up any loose scales to finish the collection. Place a black collection card under the toe with the infected nail. Then use a blunt scalpel to scrape under the nail until the crumbling degenerative keratin debris is reached. Initially it may take some time to dig under the nail, however with perseverance you will be able to collect enough material.
The keratin debris from under the nails is the best specimen to collect for a laboratory diagnosis. Use a swab to pick up loose debris to finish the collection. This amount of material and a swab will maximise the ability of the laboratory to make a diagnosis. Another example of a nail collection showing the use of a blunt scalpel to scrape under the nail. It's often surprising to see just how much keratin debris is present. Collect as much material as you can. The greater the amount, the more chance the laboratory has of making a diagnosis. Once again, use a swab to pick up loose debris to finish the collection. One final example of a nail collection showing the use of a blunt scalpel to dig out the keratin debris from under the infected nail. It may take three to five minutes to dig out enough material from under the nail. Use a swab to pick up loose debris to finish the collection. The ability of the laboratory to detect a fungus is very much dependent on the quality of the specimen it receives. For example, the black card on the left, labelled A, shows an adequate collection with sufficient material for the laboratory to do both microscopy and culture. However, the card on the right, labelled B, shows a grossly inadequate specimen, what we in the lab call fairy dust. Please remember, it is necessary to collect an adequate amount of material for both microscopy and culture. Quantity is the most important thing. Finally, always check that the form is correctly filled out and that all specimens are correctly labelled and sealed. Thank you for helping us to provide a quality pathology service to our patients.